right, let's see how this video goes. <laughs> I'm saying the pure self. Number one, the pure self has no karma. It also, it has no, there's no heaven or hell for it to go to. Because heaven and hell is a state. It's a, it's a, it's a state. It's a place. It's a subtle place. Hell, hell may not be so subtle, but you see, these are states. Pure self is the stateless state in which these states appear in. So how can the pure self go anywhere when the pure self is everything, including you? How can you not be the pure self? You couldn't exist without the pure self because the pure self is everywhere and everything. So your deepest, deepest essence is the pure self. Hence how the concept of awakening <coughs> originated. We're trying to, uh, awakening is for the apparent human character self or individual sense of self. It doesn't have to be human. It is somehow being merged with this essence that it already is. That gives the experience of awakening. All right. Hmm. Like, where do we start, though? So, going to heaven or hell, it depends on our level of consciousness. That will that will determine what's our inner state will determine and correspond with other, you can say, states, outer states. So when we leave this body, if we're just totally ignorant and we hurt people or hurt things with no remorse, no conscience whatsoever, we're probably <clears throat> going to go to a place or a state that is going to uh, help us become more aware. <laughs> we're probably, probably gonna have to experience what we dished out to other beings we're going to experience that directly. So it's going to feel like hell, but it's purging, it's purification. And then that's going to help you not do it again. See, it's all good. It's like that movie Powder. Where the hunter kills the deer, Powder didn't like that. Powder took the hunter's hand, put it on the dying deer, and the hunter experienced how that deer was feeling. Then the hunter says, I'm done hunting. His son said, what's up? Like, I thought we were going hunting. No, that boy did something to me. I'm done. He says, I felt what that deer felt when I shot him. Okay. So it's good if we already have that, a certain level of unity consciousness with other beings while we're here. So then we, have to, we don't have to go through that. So Powder did him a favor, actually. Maybe that guy would have had to go to hell because <clears throat> he didn't have any kind of uh, feeling or com compassion for uh, other, other sentient beings. Powder maybe stepped his karma down so that he could realize this, this thing in this life. He didn't have to go through some uh, training, call it. So heaven, same thing. There's different levels of heaven. There's different levels of hell. It's not just one eternal heaven, heaven, one eternal hell. You're going there or there. This is like, can you see how overly simplified <laughs> dogma and the mind likes to try to make things it doesn't work like that but if we're talking about uh, yeah because there's different levels of hell like the example I gave very gross level you shoot people and you don't feel anything yeah you're gonna need you're gonna need some heavier heavier duty training than maybe somebody <coughs> who just uh, gossips and talks bad behind people's back lies cheats they're gonna go to a little a less intense training but they're still gonna have to learn learn these things that's why we're here to learn them now so we attract a heavenly state the more aware we are of our subtle nature the more we're going to attract a more heavenly state heaven's subtle hell is gross it's heavy if you do gross, heavy things while we're in this body. Like, like for example, there's some people, you could put them in heaven, they have no idea they're in heaven. They wouldn't know. They just sleep through the whole thing. Why? Because they're not tuned on, on a more refined uh, sense of 
being or energy. They only know dopamine stimulation, habits, sex, addictions, drinking, fighting, adrenaline stuff. They, they're only aware of that. They don't know what it means to just like go sit, just sit. Just go in nature and sit or sit at home and you just become aware of your subtle nature. They don't know what that is. That's what heaven is. The more subtly refined your consciousness is, the more you're going to attract a more heavenly state. This is what it is. I wanted to talk about a couple other things that, uh, that helped me. Um, where should I start, though? See, this isn't the only planet for training. This is, this is like the grossest level training. We come here when we, there's certain desires that more on more gross level that we want to experience. We want to experience what it's like to be, you know, really good at something and get a lot of praise from people. Or what is it like to be a model <clears throat> or to be, uh, you know, sex or, you know, stimulating the senses. How can we get our senses stimulated? I'm addicted to having my senses stimulated. If those desires are strong, we have to come here because this is the planet for that. When those things have been satiated, or transcendent, it's a better word. They never get satiated. They get satiated <laughs> via transcendence. Then, we might hang out. We don't have to come back here unless later we become an avatar and then by divine grace, we're supposed to come here as, as a, an instrument to help raise the consciousness of people like Jesus and Buddha and Muhammad, etc. So if we uh, transcended this very earthly <coughs> level of consciousness, then we might just hang out in the astral dimensions. There's training there too. There's training in heaven. You don't just, like, what do you think heaven is? You just sit there and, I'm in heaven. It's a state. There's, there's some kind of, uh, you know, there, there's a function to fulfill in, in every state. So that's more advanced level training, the more subtle dimensions. It's, it's a more refining of this, uh, of, of, of the consciousness expanding. More refining. You're looking... You're looking more <clears throat> on like root level. Like you don't have a desire for things, but you can feel the desire still there maybe in some abstract level. There's still something that's kind of wanting a kick, wants a hit. That's more, but it doesn't take any shape. It's just that, you know, tendencies there. So then you work that stuff out on the more on the astral dimensions. Or maybe you you still <clears throat> it's fun flying around. Maybe you wanna you know you wanna fly around. <laughs> you wanna materialize things. The other dimensions are for that. But at some point that gets boring. It's a constant refinement to where you're free of any any desire or compulsion except to be one with your source. And then uh, Shri Yukishtashwar says said it the best. He says, ultimately, <clears throat> you merge with the source, but you retain your individuality. You see, that was the... He said the main thing there that I was wondering when I was growing up. Because I'm like, once you become enlightened, that's it? You just vanish? Well, who wants to become enlightened? No. You're one with the source, but you retain your individuality, so you're basically the cake and you're eating it too. Oh, this tastes really good. I'm eating myself. That's the goal. And still, you can, <clears throat> the divine ordinance will have you incarnate either on this dimension or a higher echelon astral dimension or causal dimension, and then you'll serve as some kind of teacher, helping the other beings to get more awake. There's no end. There's always new fresh beings coming in all the time. Are we going to talk about the yugas now? 
maybe just maybe a little bit. So I've talked about the Yugas before <laughs> because man, it's funny like how <clears throat> some people think like this one life is it. This is it. Or they're trying to reach some kind of utopia. They think at some point this earth is going to be utopia. It'll never be utopia, ever. So the four yugas, dark age, uh, during Jesus' time, technological age, which is now, <laughs> silver age, which is when you can start to manipulate with life force and energy. This is probably when science will have some kind of machine that you can lay in, and then if you have any kind of element in your body, it'll just stimu stimulate the life force in that area and boom, you'll, you'll be better. That has pros and cons to it, like I talked about in a short video I made. <coughs> then you, also, I think that's how they built the pyramids. Because during that time was Silver Age, I believe, I feel, and they could um, use sound in mantras to move like things that weighed thousands and thousands of tons. So then after Silver Age, you have Golden Age. It's said there, 85% of the beings there are awakened. And that's supposed to be the time where a lot of these um, gods on some level, high, high level self-realized realized beings, they may incarnate. They don't have to come here anymore. Like they're done with this dimension. But they may come back during Golden Age. You know, why not? That would be the time to come back. So, the cycle of the Yugas, it's a 26,000 year cycle. I like the Vedas. The Vedas describe this stuff and it really resonated. I'm like, okay, this, this, ma this makes sense. Intuitively, this makes sense. And so that's why I remember. I remember things that, that make sense. Most things don't make sense, so I don't remember them. I don't have ADD. I just don't remember things that don't make any sense to me. So, the yuga is 26,000 year cycle, the yugas. It's 13,000 years of that 26 to go through the ages, from dark to technological age, obviously that's the age we're in now, it, to sil silver age, golden age. It takes 13,000 years. Then guess what happens? What? Earth becomes utopia? No. It goes, other, it goes backwards then. It goes back to silver age. <coughs> back to technological age, back to dark age. You have fresh new souls, like this game, this game, fresh new beings. This game continues, it just keeps going. That's why like, like what do you think? Like you're, like the, the contemporary beings that are here now, like that's it? There's nobody else? There's beings, there's consciousness that's gonna be graduating from the plant kingdom going into the animal kingdom and then they go into the human kingdom and then from here we go to the astral and then the causal it just keeps going so it's 26,000 years to go through the yugas and back down that's said to happen 1,000 times that's the cyclic nature what happens after that it's said then it's called the night of the Brahma Brahma, or God, or the formless, sucks everything back up into itself on all dimensions and all levels. Physical level, astral level, causal level. There's only God, which doesn't know it's God because there's no creation there. That's night of the Brahma. Brahma rests for 316 trillion years. That's what it says. And then creation starts again. Now, when I first heard that, I was like, damn, that's going to suck. <laughs> and I started, I started perceiving it differently. I said, well, number one, what difference does it make? <laughs> you won't even know. Like, whether it's a year or 316 trillion years, if you're in a deep state of deep sleep, it's like that. Like, how you, you don't even know. You ever, you ever had a uh, gas mask anesthesia and been out for several hours? You wake up, it's like, like nothing. 
So that, that was one thing, way, way I looked at it. The other way, I said, wait a minute though. These rishis that, that know this, that are declaring this, there must have been some level of consciousness even during that deep rest. Otherwise, how could you, you know, how could you say it? It also goes back to Sri Yukteswar, which says, <clears throat> once you completed this uh, transcendent game, then you're gonna be merged with the pure consciousness while still retaining individuality. See? So maybe you get to a high enough degree of consciousness, you, you're, you're just, imagine just basking in peace for 316 trillion years. Then I was like, oh, okay, this isn't so bad after all. Now, the last thing I want to touch on, though, because you hear me say over and over again, there's no such thing as a one and done, you're awakening, one and done awakening. But yet, you hear me saying here that uh, once one's awake, that you merge with the source and you retain your individuality, but like you're done. I'm kind of, I was kind of alluding to like you're done. Yeah, you're done on that level, in that state, that anytime, it doesn't matter who the master is, if they reincarnate into some kind of form, whether it be physical level, astral level, causal level, you have to assume some karma in order to be in this form. So, you see, then the, 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 there's always something to rub out or to clean and to do introspection and to stay vigilant. That's part of the tax for taking a form. You gotta have something there. That's why, like, there's no, like, you know, I'm perfect now and I'm done and that's it. No, if you're here right now on any level, there's something there. There's something there that's, you can say, not pure. That's cool. You just come to realize, yeah, this is this is the tax. No problem. I'll pay that tax. I enjoy the sense of exist existence. So, all right, <clears throat> my voice is starting to hurt because I'm trying to talk over the waves here, and I made a couple videos already. But I wanted to make this video. This was a, a little different kind of video. So let me know. Let me know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, let me know what you think. Not what you think. Let me know. Just let me know something. All right. See.